airport to block Russian forces. Kevin Dunn reports. It was Russia's surprise dash into Kosovo which provoked the reported clash between NATO's supreme commander and the British general in charge on the ground. The Russians seized control of the airport at Pristina, embarrassing NATO forces and presenting K-4 commanders with a dilemma. According to Newsweek magazine, General Wesley Clark wanted British and French troops to mount an airborne assault to take the airfield first. But General Sir Mike Jackson, who was in overall charge of K-4 on the ground, decided not to confront the Russians directly. General Jackson is said to have told General Clark, I'm not going to start the Third World War for you. General Clark next asked an American admiral to send American helicopters to land on the runways at Pristina Airport to prevent Russian transport aircraft from landing. But Admiral James Ellis declined to move believing General Jackson would not like it. In the event, negotiations over the airport standoff continued for several days, culminating in a deal which allowed the Russians a presence in several areas of Kosovo, but with NATO assuming overall control of the airfield. General Clark visited Kosovo with Secretary General Javier Solana 12 days after K-4 troops entered Pristina. It was at this meeting with General Jackson that General Clark is reported to have complained his orders were not being followed, and General Jackson made his remark about World War III. The report of their differences comes only days after Washington let it be known that General Clark is to leave his NATO post early. Kevin Dunn, ITN. At least 250 people have been killed and more than 200 in a spacecraft to the planet in the year 2003. So far, they've raised 13 million pounds to fund the project. The government explained today why it's funding the project. Well, first of all, it's, it's just very interesting scientifically about uh, processes, uh, life processes on Mars, but also, of course, uh, being able to drop something, uh, which is the size of about a microwave oven, onto the surface of Mars, and then take samples of the Earth uh, from the atmosphere and of rocks, and actually sample those and test them on the surface of Mars uh, is a very important engineering challenge. And if we can do that, it will be a big boost to our space industry. And our science editor, Lawrence McGinty, is at the Open University in Milton, in Milton Keynes. Now, Lawrence, tell us more about this. Well, John, we've come here to the Open University because this is where the whole idea uh, was dreamt up. And, and beside me, you can see here, this is a full-scale model of uh, what Lord Sainsbury there called something the size of a microwave oven. Um, it's got lots of complicated instruments in it, and to tell us about it is the man whose idea it is, Professor Colin Pillinger. Colin, tell us, how will this work? Well, it might be small, but it's absolutely jam-packed with instrumentation. In fact, it's the most densely uh, packed spacecraft there's ever been with instrumentation to look for organic compounds, water, to measure uh, inorganic compounds and see whether or not there's an isotopic fractionation between the two kinds of things to show whether biology was involved in uh, producing things on Mars. And you have something there that's, that's going to be a pretty direct way of finding this out? Well, it? absolutely critical to the mission is the, our ability to look below the surface of Mars. And we'll be using the, uh, the mole which crawls across the surface and it burrows down underneath a boulder to get something which is protected from the harsh Martian environment because the evidence of life on the surface is more than likely have, would have been destroyed by, by conditions on the planet. So really you're looking for life or, or the traces of life under the surface? We'll be looking for past life under the surface and the same set of suite of instruments can analyse the atmosphere to see whether there are any gases there that are produced by living organisms and this is a, a method which tells you whether there is life anywhere on the planet because of course the atmosphere circulates. And the government's just given you, what, £5 million? How important is that? The government has contributed to a £5 million sum, which is very important to us because up until now, the partners in this have been working under their own resources. Now, we actually have to go out and spend money and commit to you know, placing orders. And that money's going to really help you do that? That's going to help us do that. But most important on all, on all of this, by the government saying that we're an excellent scientific project, this will help us to convince the people who have uh, hinted that they might want to be involved as sponsors, yeah. we'll be able to go back to them and say, look, now you have it, the once in now a lifetime chat to get on board. Okay, thanks very much, Colin Fillinger. Back to the studio. The Manchester United manager, Sir Alex Ferguson, has stunned the football world by revealing that he was once offered a £40,000 bribe. In his autobiography... <laughs> 
It's the sound of men marching into battle from the trenches to the Falklands. The Royal Tournament at Earl's Court is steeped in nostalgia, but after 119 years, the tournament itself is being consigned to history. The men at the Ministry have decided that they simply can't spare around 3,000 servicemen and women for two weeks, so tonight we'll see the very last tournament. We, frankly, we were reaching the end of the line, and the final cut came, of course, when we were reduced from three weeks to two, again, for manpower reasons. And I think it was then that I knew that we were going to have quite a struggle to reach the millennium, but we have made it. Has it simply gone out of fashion? No, I don't think it's gone out of fashion. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have had 101% houses uh, all the way through this year. Generations have grown up with these familiar images of horsemanship and soldiering, but these 19th century skills will not be on display in the 21st century. There will be a one-off tournament next year called, in a very millennial way, the Royal Military to 2 2000. But as the wars that our soldiers fight change year by year, so it seems does the image which the Ministry of Defence wants to project. Howell Jones, ITN, Earls Court, London. Time for us to bow out. The ITV Lunchtime News will be